A wave of terror is being sent out over all the biomes of the lands between as Nightmare Fuel is currently on a conquest to tremble the entire world with horror. This evil entity's physique is all twisted, but especially those that are hideously disfigured need identification. This is Blades of Chaos. Blades of Chaos wields not one, but two deadly improvised saw-esque weapons in its hands to cut through its victims from a significant distance. And with exceptional skills and no moral sense whatsoever can someone stop the murder spree of pure evil itself. However, Blades of Chaos's name isn't just a product of its blades, it is its blades that function as a vector to finalize its true form to corrupt gods, granting it various forms of sinner magic to set any combat arena ablaze in total chaos as the bright flames of the fell god mingle with the corruption of the black flame. Apparently Blades of Chaos sealed a deal with the godskins themselves, if it could kill one thousand men in a single day, it would be blessed with one of the strongest abilities of all time. And powerful magic on top of that too. But is it really possible to kill that many enemies within 24 hours? Well, our evil entity did so in 11 minutes and 6 seconds. While Blades of Chaos was moving through the areas known as Limgrave, Lyrnia and Kaelid, it used a variety of its iconic moves to dominate these areas with ease. Starting off with its Terror Blade move, a move so fast and lethal we have to slow down to see what actually happens. It goes as following. To create momentum, Blades of Chaos spins its body around its axis to accordingly release a barrage of quick moves that cut through whatever is being sawn. This dangerous move can cut down any material instantly, wood, metal, human flesh. When used on its victims, it saws right through their flesh and body while setting them ablaze, killing them in pure terror. Margit was the first unfortunate victim to experience this move in real time. However, courtesy of the Blades of Chaos, it granted Margit the first hit. But like true psychopaths do, you always play with your victims first before you do the deed. After that, Margit was cut through like butter, and the many microblades of the saw blade completely disintegrated the insides of Margit. Many, many cuts. Margit never stood a chance. The battle was finished as fast as it was started. Terror Blade isn't Blade of Chaos's only move, though. Very efficient move, but Blade of Chaos wields two saws, if you remember. The one in its right hand is the one it uses for the Terror Blade move, while its other saw, the one in its left hand, is used for the Helicopter of Death move. A move characterized by Blades of Chaos lifting its weapon above its head to spin the weapon in a circular pattern, as long as it wishes for. It can keep spinning in perpetuity really. And what is more lethal than getting hit by a bunch of saw blades every second or so till your insides get wrecked to a pole? The internal bleeding will obviously culminate in a horrific death. Godrig was the first to see this move in live action, and it resulted in quite possibly the most horrific death ever recorded in tarnished history. The blades kept spinning and spinning through Godric so effortlessly and smoothly, it was like he wasn't there in the first place. Almost like a helicopter flying through clear space. Godric got wrecked to such a degree, Blades of Chaos skipped Godric's second phase altogether. It was a kill in one go, without any interruptions whatsoever. But wielding two rather big saw blades at the same time means Blades of Chaos just had to use a certain type of attack where a target is struck by both blades simultaneously through, say, jumping. Two blades of death hitting you at once, it can only lead to a very premature death. Oh look, wait, what did just die? Was there even a fight? I missed the fight, unfortunately. Blades of Chaos so far only used its options in a vacuum, but what happens if you combine it all with the amazing moveset that these improvised blades provide? solo or in tandem or in combination with the ashes of wars when used properly. It would only lead to magnificent destruction logically. Renella was a good example of where Blades of Chaos altered between various moves and attacks and where it resulted into a swift, clean, but as always brutal assassination of the Queen of the Full Moon. The way Blades of Chaos defeated Radon surely cannot be legit right, a move that just evaporates the HP bar of the infamous Radon within seconds and skips its second phase completely, just like Godric. Yet again, we're cheating or playing some kind of mod, right? No, 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 I'm 
I'm back in business. It's because our evil entity's weapon, the Vulgar Saw Militia, has a very powerful secret. Let me hijack the video for a second to explain what's going on. See, the few Tarnish that tend to use these weapons usually do so with an occult infusion to increase the weapon's rate of bloodlust buildup and scales damage at the same time. It sounds efficient, but that is not where you seek power for this weapon in particular. My Blades of Chaos build mingles Faith and Razor Sharp Bleeding Sauce together because the real power of these blades sits in Faith in my opinion. But more importantly, it's why Blades of Chaos is connected to the gods, corrupt or not, making its power level transcend to insanity itself and having faith opens possibilities you didn't think were possible. Why faith, you might ask then? Blades of Chaos' sauce gets an absolute nuclear attack rating with a faith focused infusion like the flame art infusion, completely dwarfing on any other infusion or option in the game given the same stat distribution. But keep in mind, these blades on top of the insane attack rating, thanks to us going the route of faith, now also gives us the possibility to use faith related buffs and insane incantations that optimize through the same setup while still having the innate bloodlust buildup as well that will grant us those juicy bloodlust procs still very quickly thanks to our choices of Ashes of Wars but now with every regular attack dealing much more damage and us never having to worry about enemies being immune to bleeding. Then there's also the great reach of these weapons, the amazing moveset of the Halberd and these saws can be infinitely obtained right at the start of the game. Yes, you heard that right. If this list of arguments is not convincing enough, then what is? How do we do that though? Get them in an infinite capacity at the start of the game? We have to make a journey to a place that can only be described as an unpleasant place, but only if you go in unprepared. Let's start right here where you would start if you would start a new playthrough. You move immediately to the third church of America, like a deranged sociopath. After getting your horse, preferably because walking is for peasants, like Miyazaki would say, okay, he didn't say that. Take the hidden teleporter behind the church that is very well known these days, so I'm not so hidden anymore. You end up here, and we're already at the infinite farm. This entire area is filled with these guys resembling your local drug dealer. The entire area, literally. And they drop our beloved weapons, at least the ones wielding the saw. The other ones wielding other types of weapons are not as cool to be murdered and can be easily ignored. So you kill the ones wielding our weapons over and over and over and over and over till you get as many vulgar saw militias as you want. Christmas has come early this year. Then after that you want to do a few things. Kill Grail with a golden pickled foul food, use its runes like this or so to get to level 36, go to the red main castle and obtain the red hot wet blade to make sure we can make our weapons have the flame art affinity and thus skill with faith to to make our damage bonkers and get that epic, beautiful but scary fire and hit because our damage will now be partially fire damage as well, which means we can buff that fire damage with say talismans as well. After that you can really take it to the next level by getting flame grant me strength here, golden vow here to get those nice buffs going that we have the faith requirement for and getting both smithing stone minor spell bearing 1 and 2 perhaps farm the guys at the seal tunnel where you obtain minor spell bearing 2 as well to get to a quick plus 12 or plus 15 upgrades to both your saws. To get to the alt plateau region you'll need both X medallions which can be obtained in Limgrave and Kaelid. Keep in mind to pick up the red hot wet blade before you do so though as otherwise you will trigger Radon's festival too early. This sequence of upgrading might be familiar terrain for you if you watched any of my get OP early videos where I made these routes some years ago too but ultimately you obviously can decide for yourself here what's the play in terms of how much power you want to give yourself. But either way you have a fantastic start for your playthrough right away even if you just keep it to picking up the weapons. But look that's just the early to mid game and the reality here is that we have a lot of options with this build. The terror blade move is also known as the repeating thrust ash of war in the game which the seasoned Elden Ring players might have noticed and you get this one from the Knight Rider cavalry on the bridge near the Agil Lake North site of race right here it has to be night though defeat it and you get it we go with our terror blade move for the more fast agile type of bosses to clear them quickly 
it is an excellent option for those use cases. While we go for our helicopter of death move for the tank here, bigger bosses that have a bigger hitbox and are easier to dodge while spinning due to their attack patterns like say a Radon, a Gothric or a Fire Giant. The helicopter of death move is also known as spinning strikes in the lands between and can be obtained from Edgar at Castle Morn. Make sure to put him out of his misery and do the deed, so you can easily acquire this Ash of War at the start of the game right here too. The combination of these two Ashes of Wars is incredible for this build and will help you clear all the early to mid game bosses in style while complementing each other very well. But like I also said, don't sleep on the moveset and jump attacks of these blades, especially when you use them together. As when you power stance two of these brutal weapons, well, let's just say your opponent won't see the end of the day. However, Blades of Chaos only truly ascended to the next level when it first met the Godskins and started mingling with them. Destroying everything up until that point meant Blades of Chaos was saw as fit to be rewarded with the Godskins ultimate weapon. One final test had to be completed however. Defeat the Godskins first to obtain the final piece to complete Ascension, which was permitted to be used to reach the 1000 kill quota and in turn afterwards the reward would be held forever by Blades of Chaos. Blades of Chaos could not wait any longer and the fight started and it's noteworthy and peculiar that in this part of Blades of Chaos's conquest of the lands between, magical power started triggering. It's almost as if the Godskin Arena enabled it and unlocked Blades of Chaos's final push towards greatness. Blades of Chaos started using fire and black flame magic to destroy the Godskins, of which will become clear what type of magic exactly when we analyze the Blades of Chaos's incantation roster which also by the way will scale properly thanks to our setup geared towards optimizing fire damage output. But a little spoiler alert is that one particular incantation that you definitely want to grab is Burn of Flame. Its huge AOE radius can trivialize any boss really as you saw. Aside from the addition of magic to the equation, Blades of Chaos obviously also kept using its deadly blades to make quick work of the ones that sealed the evil deal with our powerful entity. Defeating the godskins with relative ease resulted into the gift our monster lingered for for a long time now. Here's what happened to Gideon and a sneak peek of what's to come with this new mastered ability. You're observing the terror of the power of this ability in real time. The reward is also known as Black Flame Tornado, which is a raging vortex of bright black flames that annihilate everything caught inside this horrific tornado. If you are unfortunate enough to touch even one of the flames of the Blades of Chaos's new ability for even a second, you will be grabbed by death itself as a continuous stream of forbidden black flames and razor sharp saw blades decompose every single particle of your body. Your body will get obliterated on a molecule level. What am I saying? Blades of Chaos does the impossible, every single atom in your body is getting obliterated, bypassing the law of conservation of energy. Blades of Chaos has chaos in the name for a reason. It's because the disturbances created as a result of this evil entity's power has led to a cosmic imbalance never observed before, resulting into total chaos, total anarchy, the end of civilization as we know it because our evil entity has no moral frame of reference whatsoever. I'm not exaggerating because even the strongest forces of the lands between stood no chance versus Blades of Chaos. As the footage is revealing to us, they stood no chance whatsoever. Malekith, gone. Gideon, gone. Godfrey, the first Elden Lord, gone in mere seconds. What about Radican himself then? Well, the fight versus Radican was characterized by its rather very short duration and the terrible fate that was bestowed upon our red-haired beast of the Golden Order. It was like there was no fight in the first place. Radicon became a figment of the past very quickly. 
the Elden Beast on the other hand, well, also became a figment of the past quickly. It only takes a few tornadoes to decimate the Elden Beast. Just a single cast already deals thousands and thousands of damage. And our tornado being of the Black Flame school means it also has the HP sap mechanic, which is great versus enemies exactly like the Elden Beast and other big HP targets. Black Flame Tornado is an absolutely excellent example of how efficiently you can take care of the final boss in the game. This is Blades of Chaos. Its power is no longer a surprise to you by now. You can brute force bosses with its new mastered ability, literally. The numbers will go through the roof and all you have to do is get near your target, focus and it's just a matter of spin to win. And Black Flame Tornado is a great follow up for the late game and NG Plus to the pre-Godskin Blades of Chaos build, as it scales with our faith and synergizes with us optimizing for fire damage, which accordingly means it will ramp up to insane damage. Not to mention that putting such an overpowered Azure War in an optimized setup on this weapon in particular is everything you can wish for due to all the reasons that I mentioned before. But there is one final enemy, the one that has been described as the most powerful. Not for Blades of Chaos though, for Blades of Chaos this was just another walk in the park. But before we get there, we have to go through what happened prior to this fight. Namely, Blades of Chaos murdered the entire world first before taking her on. What you saw so far wasn't Blades of Chaos's final form yet. No, this build can get to an even higher level by comboing Black Flame Tornado with certain incantations as there are a variety of mechanics that synergize with it, of which utilizing those is necessary to reach the ultimate form. These 9 incantations form the roster of Blades of Chaos selection of spells that I would highly recommend you to use in conjunction to everything that was featured so far. We have the earlier mentioned Golden Vow and Flame Grant Me Strength as staples that function as the build's damage and defensive buffs. Incantation number 3 is then Black Flame's Protection, which you can use as an alternative for Flame Grant Me Strength as it has a significant defensive buff which can be useful if you struggle and when trading hits with Black Flame Tornado. Then incantation number 4 on the list is going to be Flame of the Fell God. This incantation is absolutely amazing for the Blades of Chaos setup and is obtained relatively early on. I would say that it's mandatory to have this incantation at all times. What makes this incantation great in particular is that it has an AoE explosion and deals great damage, but you can set it up preemptively too. So from a strategic perspective, you get a lot of options like that. But even more useful is the Lava-esque type of pool that it leaves behind, which staggers enemies. And you can then use that momentum that you get from that to combo those staggers with the Black Flame Tornadoes or your Power Stance attacks that you know won't get negated because you won't get interrupted as your enemy is getting staggered. Aside from Flame of the Fell God, we have the earlier mentioned Burno Flame, another mandatory inclusion. You saw how it functions versus the Godskins and we'll also see it in Action versus Melania. It is very powerful. For incantation number 6 and 7, we have Flame Fall Upon Them and Giant's Flame Take Thee. Flame Fall Upon Them is great when you need ranged, targeted AoE damage, which is a niche use case, but definitely useful here and there. And Giant's Flame Take D, on the other hand, is just your big burst fireball that you can launch from a distance. It's a great bursty spell for exactly that reason, when you need ranged damage. Finally, we have two damaging Black Flame incantations to top off the list. The first one being Black Flame, which is basically just your early to mid game Giant's Flame Take D. It's a great ranged spell for those parts of the game. That supplements your melee build early on really well. And then Black Flame Ritual for the final incantation. This is a great incantation to keep enemies at bay and away from you and with that gives you time to say launch a nuclear Black Flame Tornado in all tranquility. Blades of Chaos could really ramp up its kill count quickly with its selection of incantations, killing targets left and right and entire groups in one go. After cleansing the lands between completely, it was then time for Melania.
what did just happen, it would only be fitting to like the video and subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so yet, after witnessing something like that, of course. But what about phase 2? Well, phase 2 is where Blades of Chaos mingled other fire incantations with Black Flame Tornado as well, resulting in lethal damage output right from the start of this phase. In phase 1, Blades of Chaos really showed how amazing Flame of the Fell God is in combination with Black Flame Tornado, pretty much melting Melania's HP bar in just one sequential stream of damage as you saw. In phase 2, Blades of Chaos started using other fire incantations like Giant's Flame Take The, but also Burn of Flame, which performs exceptionally well versus bosses that tend to be mobile, as they will move their body over multiple streams of fire, which will only result in more and more damage. And Black Flame Tornado is as always extremely good in this fight and this phase too. What's so nice about Black Flame Tornado is that in addition to its amazing damage, it will still zap HP after you get struck out of the tornado which will obviously happen here and there as you do have to trade hits with this Ash of War, but as you see, it ultimately results in another fantastic clear of Melania in phase 2. Conclusion: Blades of Chaos is just really unstoppable. To finally really get an understanding of Blades of Chaos, we have to also consider the selection of talismans that this powerful killer used during its conquest of the lands between. These talismans provided to be a valuable tool for taking over the entire world. The choices are pretty straight forward. We have fire damage, so the fire scorpion charm is mandatory. We have multi-hit ashes of war and use jump attacks, so talismans like the winged sword insignia and claw talisman are great too. And the rest is pretty much just the usual good stuff. One talisman in particular that is essential after getting black flame tornado is the dragon crest great shield talisman as you will trade a lot with Black Flame Tornado due to you being stationary, so having this to mitigate a lot of incoming damage is amazing. For your flask, then get the Flame Shrouding Crack tier as soon as possible, a fire damage buff that is amazing, and the Faith Not Crystal tier to increase our faith level with ease, and both are obtainable very early on. Seals, it is the God Slayer seal early on, and then replace it with the Giant Seal when you get it. The choices here should be self-explanatory with the type of incantations that we use. Blades of Chaos touched the Marika statue at level 125, meaning we never surpassed level 125 with this build, the lowest PvP meta level. For stats, I would recommend to progress something like this across various level points. It just has the best mix of survivability, sustain and damage output and we also fully soft cap on faith with the faith not crystal tier as you see. And like any notorious killer, it's only logical that Blades of Chaos will inspire imitators and copycats. To become Blades of Chaos, however, you don't just move and fight like Blades of Chaos, you also have to look like Blades of Chaos. Its armor can be identified as the Briar Helm, the Marionette Soldier Armor, the Briar Gauntlets, and the Foot Soldier Greaves. If you want a written guide of this video to follow along in a written manner, then check out my Patreon. Or if you just want to support my channel, it's appreciated either way. But with all of that, it has become clear that the Lands Between proved to be no challenge whatsoever for Blades of Chaos. However, Blades of Chaos is still hungry, and maybe, just maybe, a different area will break a sweat for our monster.